Hi, I'm Jeff Todd, President and CEO of Prevent Blindness. Here at Prevent Blindness, we recognize July as Dry Eye Awareness Month. Here to discuss this topic with me today is Dr. April Jasper, an optometrist practicing in West Palm Beach, Florida, at the Advanced Eye Care Specialists. Welcome, Dr. Jasper. Thank you, Jeff. One condition related to dry eye that I've only recently heard of is MGD. Can you tell us a little bit about that and maybe um, tell us uh, what that stands for? Yes. So MGD stands for meibomian gland dysfunction. And I, I love explaining this because I don't think most people know that in the upper lid and in the lower lid, our glands, they flow vertically. So the same way my hand is pointing, there are 25 to 50 in the upper lid, depends on those eyeballs. If you have big eyes like me, maybe more. In the lower lid, there are fewer. Now these glands are responsible for secreting lipid. The lipid, how does it get into the tears? And remember we talked at the beginning, the watery layer is on the base of the eye. The lipid layer is on top of it to keep those tears from evaporating. What happens though, is when you blink, the lipid that is in the, those meibomian glands, the little muscles that are surrounding it help to push that lipid out every time you blink. So you have just the perfect combination of lipid to tears and to water. But here's where the problem begins. When we're on the computer, you can probably tell by looking at Jeff and I even now, but when we're on the computer, we don't blink as much. And so when we were outside playing, even when we were in school without devices, we would blink up to 16 times a minute. So blink, blink. Every time that blink action happens, we secrete that lipid into our tears so that the tears don't evaporate. With less blinking, we have less lipid secretion. And here's the other problem. When the lipid stops coming out of those glands, they can get blocked. And when they get blocked, they don't produce as much and they can actually die off. And so here's one of the other challenges of meibomian gland dysfunction is that a lot of people don't know they even have this until it gets worse. And so the problem again is we wanna be able to identify it early. We know that it is estimated that 70% of Americans over the age of 60 have what we call MGD or meibomian gland dysfunction. We also know the prevalence goes up as we get older, and we know that if we don't have the right amount of meibomian gland function, this is only going to get worse over time. So so how do you treat um, MGD? So good question. Let me walk you through some of it. So one of the first things that I do when a patient comes in, I want to know how much damage has already been done. So we look at those glands. We look to see if there's damage that's already been done. And then we look at what can we do today to help you do better? So the first thing, and it'll be in any literature you look up, all of the scientific evidence says, you wanna keep those lids clean. And so makeup can that's left there for long periods of time can be a problem. Even just, you know, I'm in Florida, you work outside, you sweat, you know, you go have fun at the beach, you've got salt spray, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you want those glands to be clean so the lipid can come out of them. So the way I explain that to patients is, and I have them use lid cleansers, so they do that twice a day. The other thing that's important is hot compresses. So when I see that people have meibomian gland dysfunction, what we have them do is use specially made hot compresses that they will put on the lids to heat that lipid and help it to come out. After they do the compresses, and that's twice a day as well, we have them massage those glands, helping that lipid to come out. If you do that twice a day, you keep those lids clean and use a specific type of artificial tear, preservative free, something that's made specifically for patients that have lipid dysfunction or have this lipid deficiency, then what happens is we can help to be certain that you have those glands functioning correctly. So that's a starting point. But sometimes it's so advanced, this problem, that we actually need people to have heat treatments or IPL done in the office. And that we won't know until you come in, but those are some other treatments. Sometimes too, we really need to put people on oral antibiotics. There's a specific process or protocol we go through that will help to get those glands functioning as well. But the main thing is daily treatment by warm compresses, 
lid hygiene, and then the lid massage. Thanks so much. And for anyone interested, you can visit preventblindness.org, type dry eye into the search button, and you'll find all sorts of information about this topic. Thanks again, Dr. Jeff.